Okay, we're back live for the wrap up for day one of Hadoop Summit. This is SiliconAngle.com's exclusive coverage and continuous coverage, wall to wall, day one. We'll be back all day tomorrow for extensive coverage. Uh, my co-host for this segment is Jeff Kelly. Dave Vellante's in Boston. Shout out to Dave, uh, covering the Dell storage forum out there. Jeff, standing in, doing a good job today. Thanks. You got the you know, stamina like Dave. I got a lot to live up to with <laughs> you and Dave. Set the standards, so. So let's just do our day one wrap. This is where we get to uh, Talk about our opinions, our analysis, and break mm -hmm. down uh, the show coverage for Hadoop Summit here. Um, first of all, my, my take is um, very successful. On a scale of one to 10, I'd give it a, a good eight, eight and a half. I wouldn't give it a 10 because they had a lot of guys walking behind us on camera. Uh, oh. Logistically, not a good situation uh, for theCUBE. But other than that, mm -hmm. I thought the agenda was great, sold out, good vibe, great conversations. You attend, uh, all the sessions are packed and jammed. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of lobby con. Um, and what I mean by that is, when you go to a conference, you can tell by how good the conference is, by how good the lobby is. If the lobby's good, the conference isn't good. <laughs> so, because people are talking in the hallway, and those are the best mm -hmm. conversations. This uh, conference is all about the sessions. They're packed, they've got meat on the bone, mm -hmm. it's technical with business case. So one, I think that's, that's great. Two, the target audience here is not all suits, yet there are people here talking business in the sense of use case, market opportunity, mm -hmm. not a lot of selling, so that's positive. Um, and just some highlights from the day, mm -hmm. from my standpoint, looking at the agenda, I thought the interview with, um, with Rob uh, Bearden, who's the CEO of Hortonworks, mm -hmm. was fantastic. His first time on theCUBE, um, he did a great job. Um, He's good, I mean, he's a fighter. You can tell, I look in the, in the, right directly in his eyes. You can see his, uh, he's got the fire in the belly, yes. he knows the space. Um, it's very complimentary of Cloudera and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So obviously, there's no real war between the two. Mm -hmm. That's big news here. Um, and Doug Cutting, obviously uh, genius in his own right. But in general, you know, obviously we had Mapar, their story with Amazon, big story bringing mm -hmm. Amazon in. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Amazon needs some simplicity around that. And just mm -hmm. in general, this huge entrepreneurial undercurrent mm -hmm. between infrastructure and application and analytics. Mm -hmm. And that is the top story, in my opinion, is that there's work going on in both of those theaters, mm -hmm. and those theaters are exploding with innovation. And there's so much disruption around this open source yes. community. Um, the big guys can't even get their hands in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. IBM, Absolutely. HP, they're just sitting on the sidelines waiting for the winners. Well, I think you, know, you, you hit on a really good point. It's not a matter of, uh, you know, waiting for the infrastructure layer to kind of become mature before we start to see applications uh, and that integration layer. We're hearing all about integration at the show. Um, and if you, you know, look behind us, there are vendors from, you name it, data integration, data application development, uh, big data application development, the infrastructure le layer, storage. So you know, it's, it's, there's innovation happening on pretty much every level of the, uh, of the, of the big data stack. Uh, you know, but for me, you know, the, the real big story was, I think we heard from just about every vendor on here was talking about uh, enterprise ready making the platform enterprise ready. That's the key to this, to this market, because when you get to the point where the enterprise has no second thoughts about uh, deploying Hadoop in terms of supporting mission critical applications and workflows, then it just opens up the entire market to all these other players, all the startups we're seeing out here. So, you know, really the, the, uh, the goal of the distribution vendors is, is enterprise ready. That's, that's the kind of the end goal. And, you know, the other thing I, I, we're seeing, of course, is the, the co-opetition, as you mentioned. There really isn't uh, you know, a war going on, like you said. You know, we, uh, and, and as you pointed out uh, so nicely that my, you know, my uh, estimate of 53 billion by 2017 uh, for the big data market, 50 billion dollars, is probably a bit low. And that means there's a lot of white space, there's a lot of opportunity, and there's no reason right now for a lot of these vendors to go cracking heads. There's a lot of opportunity out there. I mean, the, I, think the, I think everyone kind of had a gut feeling, Jeff, that um, it is, and how you size the market's interesting, I think, if you look at the impact of big data, certainly it's in the trillions, right? I mean, you right. Know, it's in the trillions of trillions, but because it affects every business from the military all the way to retail, and I think we are all seeing classic innovation cycle here in Silicon Valley and beyond, where 
there's so much wealth creation opportunity is that you, know, you don't want to have a situation where, as the old expression goes, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Um, and there's plenty of beachhead, plenty of room for billion dollar businesses. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, that's, that's no kidding, all kidding aside. There are a billion dollar businesses in this ecosystem that will flourish out of this new wave of big data. They're in this room. And they're in this room here. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, that, you know, half the people in this room are going to be billionaires. Um, or, or mm -hmm. certainly successful because um, if the community continues to align the, with the stars of big data momentum, you're going to see that. The other thing that I would say that I see as a real big trend out of Hadoop Summit is something that we've been reporting on consistently is the notion of moving from batch to real time. Mm -hmm. And that what real time means is a very interesting conversation because with Hadoop, you have the holy trinity of HBase, HCFS, and, and uh, MapReduce because, but you can get near real time. So the word near real time is good enough to get solutions out to the door, but still not good enough to cross the chasm, because we're going to talk to Jeffrey Moore tomorrow, mm -hmm. to the big deal, which is the I, customers of IBM, the customers of HP, um, companies doing billion dollars of transactions on, on, their, on their infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, enterprises that have thousands of servers. So that's where the real deal is. So to me, that's where it's going and the big guys are just waiting. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, back up the truck from the Hadoop ecosystem, uh, we're buying. So my, my big yeah. uh, vision and takeaway from this is that absolutely a marketplace of buyers will be here. They're already kicking the tires. Um, so huge exit opportunity for the right technology and certainly for the right company, mm -hmm. IPO and massive growth. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think we have to talk a bit about, uh, you know, while there isn't a, a, a war, there are definitely different business models going on here. Uh, Hortonworks taking that, uh, kind of that Red Hat model. We talked to Rob Bearden today. I'd love to get your take. Uh, you know, you've been watching, you've been, uh, you know, in the Valley for, for years. Do you think that that model is really viable? Which one? The uh, uh, Hortonworks uh, model of uh, kind of priming the, the market, giving away essentially uh, the product, uh, and then as they scale, selling them support. Um, I don't know, I, I, the jury's still out. You know, after talking to Rob, I feel differently about my initial reaction in talking to Pat Gelsinger, who makes a very compelling argument that the Red Hat with the Linux is a different mindset than Hadoop distribution, which is a different community, different product mm -hmm. approach. And oh, by the way, the product market is evolving very rapidly again, both on the infrastructure side and on the software side. So the quote, Red Hat model assumes a massive land grab by one leading distribution, mm -hmm. and you saw MapR with their distribution deal with, um, with AWS, mm -hmm. certainly is, changes the game a bit for large scale clouds. So, on one hand, I think that um, that points to a no. On the other hand, um, in looking and talking to and seeing some of the smirks on his face, and <laughs> I can see the wheels churning in his brain, that there's other stuff going on that we haven't yet reported on, like what's going on with VMware, like what's going on in the traditional enterprises, and because there's a trillion dollars of value being uh, up for grabs, it's a big pile of money in the middle of the table, that's going to be redistributed. So if you're an incumbent vendor, like an IBM or an HP or a big player, you have so much at stake. I mean, look at what Microsoft's got at stake. The, the trillions of dollars of business that might change hands, when, when you have that kind of disruptive marketplace, you could lose trillions. So, so there, I look to Hortonworks really being that arms dealer. So I think their business strategy is sound in the sense that they're going to have an outcome either way. So I don't think at Pat's point, although legit, there's an argument that says, okay, given the nature of the business, there's also the scenario where no matter what Hortonworks does, the outcome may still be the same. Massive exit, massive acquisition, mm -hmm. certainly locking in those distribution deals. And can they play the quote chess game and poker at the same time? is ultimately what they need to do. And in talking to Rob, I think he's the kind of executive in looking at the team, we talk to them, that they have guys who can play chess and poker at the same time. So I think that's a viable strategy, and I think it's a good call, it's a good solid strategy. I think if I was in their shoes, it's something that I would do as well. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so you know, we talked a little bit about, somebody mentioned today on theCUBE, uh, kind of the consolidation we're going to see in this market, and you just alluded to it, but, uh, but almost Val. a first way, Val, exactly. Uh, the kind of a first way of seeing some of the smaller startups kind of uh, actually a wave of consolidation in that layer first. Uh, what did you think of that, uh, that strategy? Or think, that, uh, sorry, that idea? I think consolidation will happen. I think it's just, you know, this is one of those things where it really depends on how wide the market gets, Jeff. Like for example, my opinion is, is that 
it depends, it's like musical chairs. When the music stops, and we heard Tasso mentioning about, it's a great time right now, it builds value, because you don't know when the good times will end. Ultimately, that's what I call musical chairs. When the music stops, you're not, and you don't have a seat to sit in, you're <laughs> going to be out. So that's when you have uh, vendors that have conflicting strategies. And I found that interesting with our conversation with Datastax, for example. Because I, I look at data, what Datastax is doing is they're not the bell of the ball like they used to be. Cassandra used to be really the big deal. Now it's like a NASCAR race. They're drafting behind um, Hadoop and other mm -hmm. uh, more hyped up environments. And given some of the scale that they're doing, ultimately the proof points in their solution will allow them to slingshot around everybody. So that's going to be what the, the jockeying position. So from the startups world, if they're all fighting the same visual uh, interface, for example, on the analytics side, mm -hmm. it really comes down to the products, right? So this is an area that's not going to be a, you know, you can't just throw a haymaker out there and expect to be successful. This is an area that requires, as Arun pointed out, you know, assembly-like coding, C++-like expertise. Mm -hmm. So you can't just, you know, throw a product out there and be junk and expect it to be good. So I think what you'll see is you'll see startups get funded and um, be kind of a hump, ho hobbling along with the product. They'll get consolidated to another team, an AccuHire, or if there's too many people competing for, say, visualization tools, mm -hmm. you know, Tableau's doing great, all these other environments are, mm -hmm. are ahead, you know, they might consolidate down. So, I see consolidation in the pockets where there's too much overlap, then I would immediately, as Pat Gelson, mm -hmm. find a center point for, the, for, the, for, the, um, for each startup, because there's plenty of beachhead right. out there. Absolutely. All right, so, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, what we're seeing uh, with attendees, we talked a little bit about that today, and it's interesting, some, some, some of our guests said, well, yeah, we're seeing uh, this is more of a developer crowd, and others are saying, well, we're seeing more business here than we expected. So it depends on your point of view, I suppose. Uh, but what is your take kind of on the, uh, you know, the, the attendees here? Uh, is, this a, is this a tech show, or is this a business show? This is a tech show. This show is absolutely about tech, and it's about, if you look at the sessions, you can see that the, the speakers, uh, and how they got this different sessions, it's all about tech. So I think that's the most important. One of the big complaints about Strata was it was too businessy. A lot of biz dev, people trying to jockey and understand, which is good, there's a show, we need that show for that. But this show's about use cases, and there's way too much work to do. We heard from Doug Cutting. Yeah. Doug Cutting's talking about Avro and some other things. And when you have that much work to do on the product side in open source, and on the commercial side, you need a show like this, and this is definitely all tech. Mm. So, you know, but that, that being said, we've had some practitioners on who talked about the business use cases, some of the, some of the uh, kind of, how they're bringing value. And that was kind of interesting to me. We talked to Clout today. Uh, doing some very interesting things. They've been kind of uh, working with Hadoop from the get-go, and they talked about, uh, you know, kind of, right now, kind of two separate environments, kind of for Hadoop, and then your analytics, and they're, they, were, they would love to see uh, kind of Hadoop consolidate the analytics layer kind of into Hadoop, uh, which is, you know, we're hearing from more and more uh, enterprises, you know, would like to, the, the more you can streamline that platform, the better. The less yeah. you have to move data around, the better. I mean, I think one thing I learned today on that was, does it drive towards not piping the data, mm -hmm. putting uh, analytics where the data resides? Um, where my, in, my instinct was hearing, by my instinct and what I was hearing was putting analytics, decoupling analytics from HDFS and uh, Hadoop into another analytics engine. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've seen that with structured databases to, un, to roll up the data, that was one. Um, but actually putting it within HDFS was interesting, I thought that would be, be cool, so. Yeah, well I think that's a long-term uh, question that has yet to be answered. You know, we. we you know, every, just about every database vendor out there has now has a Hadoop connector. Uh, but moving data between Hadoop and other systems, you know, is that a long-term viable strategy? And I'm not sure that it is. Uh, it's certainly a short-term fix. But in the long term, a more consolidated platform with less data movement uh, is probably where we're going in terms of what form that actually takes. Of me, well, it's the to be thing seen. that I looked at the Avro project as an indicator to me of what's going on. And H Catalog is a very promising direction with with what uh, Hortonworks is doing. The mm -hmm. metadata around looking at data sets rather than looking at all this pre hardened code within the, mm -hmm. within the applications. Because what, what developers don't want to do is recode in the application. That's, we're hearing that loud and clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, day one, any final thoughts before we break uh, here? Well, it's been a great day. It's yep. been another long day here on theCUBE, yep. uh, but I enjoyed it. Um, Real innovations here on theCUBE. We had our Studio B, our first run of expanding our coverage where we had on-demand uh, people checking in, it's what we call Studio B. Uh, we're grabbing video on the show and really documenting the community here, having a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. We'll be back tomorrow for day two. Stay tuned, we'll be right back.